What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Call Her Holy. My name is Nicoletta, and I'm literally not with my girl, Laura, and I hate introducing this podcast without her because we just have this rhythm down, but Laura had her baby last week, sweet, sweet little boy, and he is literally adorable. I don't know how she does it. She was telling me that she was going to be able to be on this podcast today, and I was like, man, I get like a cold and I skip the podcast. You had a baby come out of your body, and anyways, but we're not here to talk <laughs> about what happens when you have a baby in whatever situation that you went down. We are here because I'm with the one, the only Liz Van Dyke. Hey, excited to be here and Miss Laura for sure. Oh my gosh. She was so excited about this episode and because one, she met you at the retreat Mm -hmm. and two, I just sing your praises all the time. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't know who Liz is, she is a body image nutritionist and intuitive eating nutritionist. Mm -hmm. And she came on the noble retreat and she really is one of the biggest best blessings in my life. She spoke at the retreat. So many women gained a lot of wisdom from you on the retreat and you've even walked alongside me and my Mm. own body image journey just around Mm. food and around um just I mean all of it you really are one of the biggest gifts in my life thank you and it's really sweet the way that we were introduced just because we both have the passion for like the issues that come up around body image and food and then how that relates to spirituality and faith and Yes, my degree is in nutrition and I've studied and worked in this field for a long time, but my biggest qualification and I try to remember is just being a center and um, feeling like the Lord has placed it on my heart to spend a lot of time in this area, spend a lot of time in these conversations and just share what I've learned through things that I've walked through and the ways that he's moved me, so... Yeah. And she has such a great story and I can't wait for you guys to hear about it. And today I'm really excited because we are talking about control and surrender and yes, around food and body image and all the things as we are going into Thanksgiving tomorrow and Christmas is in a couple weeks later, but also just control and surrender in all areas. But I feel like it would be a disservice not to tell our listeners about the thing that we've been working on for the last month. Yeah. I mean, should you want to tell people or you want me to tell people? (laughs) You start and then I'll add. Okay. So if you have been following around on Noble, all the things, we are officially dropping a 12 days of Noble Christmas. And if you have um, been part of Noble for a while, you know that we dropped this last year, but it is an updated version with new workouts and you added devotionals yes. to the Christmas. So I wrote devotionals on comparison over the holidays, um, how to survive getting out of routine over the holidays. We have recipes, we have workouts, but tell them about what you added because I'm so excited. Yeah. So one of the biggest conversations and just previous work that I've done around the holidays is the chaos that can come with food. And yeah. a lot of that has to do with the fact that the foods that we are exposed to in the holidays are very novel. So we don't have access to them throughout the year. So there can be a lot of feelings and a lot of um, just like out of control experiences with eating at yeah. Thanksgiving around families who are also <laughs> probably making comments or navigating their own relationships with food and body image. And so there's a lot there. So I just offer some tips on how to uh, stay grounded and stay connected in the process of being around foods that feel really exciting. And then I think I also, um, after the retreat, realized this need for education around the topic of food chaos and emotional eating and gentle nutrition from a biblical lens. And so I've been working on a course because I don't love that people have to just rack up the bills, spending so much money having sessions for to receive education that they could receive asynchronously and then go take that education and process it with somebody in session. And so I wanted to create something that was just really accessible for people to get education in these topics. So I just offer um, a little bit of an intro into the lessons and what's going to be covered in some of those videos. Come on. Yeah. And so what I'm really excited about, so if you are somebody that maybe you do struggle around food or body image exercise over the holidays, or you just want a devotional to do over the holidays with your girlfriends, the 12 days of Noble Christmas is a great opportunity. I know I did it last year with girlfriends, but we are doing devotionals. We're doing workouts. And then my favorite part is that you and I are going to do live Zoom calls twice over the holidays. And we are going to do a live Mm Q&A and also a live Bible study over food and the holidays. And what does the Bible have to say? just around these topics it's to hopefully give you women a community 
over the holidays. And so for those that keep asking, like, I haven't been able to come on a retreat, but I want to, this is your opportunity to just have an intro of what the retreats look like. And so check out the link in bio, check out the Spotify notes, go to my page, go to Noble Pages, and you can see where you can purchase that Devo. You'll get added to a group where we're going to do live Zooms. You'll get the devotional. It's a PDF. And we just hope that you get to join our community. And I would love to know you. I know Liz would love to know you. And just really, truly, my life has been marked by the holidays joy being stolen because mm-hmm. I've been anxious around food. Um, holidays are stolen because I have food chaos. Mm-hmm. And my hope, which is noble in the holidays, is to restore us to the Genesis 1 narrative that food is a gift, that we can be okay in the body that we have over the holidays. We're not fearful of if we gain weight just because we know that our bodies are resilient. And so I really do want the audience to know you though, Liz. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your story. How did you get to this place? I know that, yes, we're talking a lot about food right now, but control, surrender. Control is, yes, a lot about food, but it is literally every area Mm -hmm. of our life. And I'm so excited for our listeners to hear about your story because it's so powerful. So yeah, yeah. Um, I think the theme in my life that I have seen the Lord wrestle with trying to refine me is showing me where when I'm struggling is when I am trying to be my own provider. Yeah. And a lot of times like sin all comes back to the moment in the garden where an Eve thought, oh, there's something that I was told not to go for but it looks desirable and I don't trust that he is good enough. And so I want to take action and make sure that I get mine. And there is a root of, I don't trust the father and I need to be my provider behind all types of sin. The ways that I've seen that in my life was through friendships. Um, I think a lot of my relationship with the Lord started when I, I was bullied a lot. I don't know if you know that. No, uh, I didn't. Oh, I didn't. really? Which is crazy. Oh, really bullied. Guess, someone bullied you? I would <laughs> fight them? <laughs> uh, I, like, it was intense and at the time, but I also just felt like, wow, if people would behave this way, like, that's on them, you know? Yeah. That's not very kind. And, uh, but yeah, girls were, were not nice, but that really probably protected me in that season, a really developmental season to stay focused on the things that are matter and the things that are important. And that really like pulled me back to Jesus and his spirit and like how he says that we are meant to operate and through trying to decide school and what I wanted to do with my life and just difficult relationships. uh, I felt really confused, but anytime that I would just surrender it and let it go and be like, okay, God, what would you have for me? What do you want? Everything became clear and my steps were made for me. All I had to do was walk. And that can be hard because we want to know what the step is before we take it. And for me to just be like, okay. And I saw that through, I started out as a nursing student, um, was in the hospitals, taking care of patients, realizing I'm way too empathetic for this. Like the families, (laughs) I'm just sobbing with them. And (laughs) Uh, wanted to help people, but I just couldn't. So I moved into nutrition and my favorite part about nursing school was psych. So when the opportunity came up, I worked uh, uh, as an intern with eating disorders, which led me right into my first job where I worked in the eating disorder recovery space for four years. And that is what exposed me to intuitive eating and my own disordered relationship with food. In that time frame, I had a lot of chaos with eating, um, just dealing with body changes, especially when going to college and being told essentially this message of it's up to you to make sure that your body doesn't change, which is crazy when you're 18, yeah. going into 19, 20, 21, bodies are supposed to change. <laughs> but I was- Say it louder for the people in the back. Right. We actually, we need to hear that. Right. Bodies are supposed to change. Right. Yeah. And if going. you're if you're six years old, don't you expect to look different when you're eight years old? So why are we assuming it's not the same when we're adults? Dang. So I started to recognize my body was changing, clothes were fitting differently, and that kind of introduced my disordered relationship with food and exercise. And it got pretty escalated to a point where I ate a donut and found out that I couldn't, wouldn't have time to work out. And I think I cried. I was so mad. Wow. And was like, Elizabeth. This is, this is too much. And that's when those like small nudgings from the father of him just, 
anytime I hear him, it's like he's referencing me as daughter and he's just like, I have way more for you than this. And like, you are way more than this. And so that's when I realized, okay, this is not the path. This is not even an alignment. I think a lot of times as believers, we tend to think our relationship with food and image is like separate from our walk with the Lord. And they're so involved or even our relationship with like how we're deciding how much effort and emphasis we're placing on our appearance beyond our just body size. And so that brought the father into that area of my life. And I found intuitive eating took a while to heal my relationship with food. I think a lot of people expect it to be done in three months, but takes a lot of time. Yeah. Um, learned a lot, became certified, started working with clients, um, worked with folks outpatient and, um, on a coaching platform on body image relationship with food. And then the more I dove into that space, the more I got to know the Lord, the more I saw, oh, wow, there's so much overlap here, especially when it comes to this dynamic of I want to take control and I want to manage because I need to feel like I need to be my own provider and that I'm not enough if I don't have this or look like that. And every single one of those moments is me forgetting the father and who he says I am. Yeah. Dang. And tell us, okay, tell us a little bit about yourself outside of just food in body image, because I know control and surrender, mm-hmm. we talked about yesterday when we got coffee, is not just around food. Mm-hmm. And so tell us a little bit about your story, because I want to be able for the listener to go, but I don't struggle with food. Right. To be able to hear this and be like, but man, like, I do relate yeah. to her in that. Yeah. Um, so I'm probably going to start a little bit earlier. I don't even know if you know this. So. Oh my gosh, tell me. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> the drama. Um, when I was... So out of college, things were just really hard, like figuring out who I was. And I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't, I knew I like loved this career thing with food, but I think I always thought I was supposed to get married. Yeah. And um, in marriage, I would find security in my future and security in who I was. And that was just like the culture. And it was something that I desired. Uh, So I was in a relationship And I had been in like not so great relationships in college. And this person was really great, treated me awesome, really sweet, really kind. Um, I ended up getting engaged and then broke off that engagement. Oh my gosh, no, I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. Because (laughs) um, I, when I was honest with myself, uh, I immediately after I got engaged, I lost peace. And that is so the way the Lord communicates with me. Yeah. And anytime I would think about, walking away from that relationship, I would have this thought of, oh, but what if no one else wants me? And I realized I was trying to drive my own future. And for me to stay, it became clear, like for me to stay in the relationship was the Lord being like, you can have it your way Mm. or you can have it mine and you can let it go. Wow. So I walked away And that was a big moment of like, hey, I don't want to, like me trying to work to surrender my idolization of marriage and like trying to control my future. And I don't want this to happen because I'm the one being my provider and I'm the one pushing it forward. And I'm afraid of what it means about me if it doesn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Talk to the girl for a second that maybe is in a relationship and has immense lack of peace. Or just maybe la- yeah. immense lack of peace in any area yeah. of your life. Well, I, I think if there's a lack of peace, going back to the um, taking the next step, it sounds like you are becoming clear what the next step is not. Dang. And releasing that a little bit requires grief. It's scary. Um, and it's also such a profound opportunity to create space for the Lord to come in and to be close with you and then to invite you to take a step forward without knowing the rock that's going to land you're going to land on yeah that's so good it's funny because in the last month just full transparency it's been one of the hardest months of my life Mm. like I've been off social media and I just feel like I've been sitting with the Lord because after the retreat I experienced spiritual warfare like I've never experienced in my life I feel like I've, Laura has actually been such a godsend in this season of, she just goes, oh man, I have walked alongside pastors after they've put on conferences and this is super common. And so for me, I'm just starting out with Noble 
the retreat was my very first mini conference, you could say. And the last month has just been filled with my own, like I spoke truths that I believed to my core at the retreat. And in the last month, I'm like, am I a fraud? Like, I don't know why Mm. I'm struggling to believe this. And it's so crazy, but it's this, but I have found myself believing in fearing more than I ever have in the Mm -hmm. sense of God is going to fail me. Mm. therefore I must take control. Mm. And it wasn't until this past weekend where I feel like I got coffee with some friends in Atlanta and my, they looked at me, they go, there's something beautiful when you can finally say, I, I literally can't do it, God. Mm-hmm. Like I am not God and I can't do anything. Like I can't heal my body image thoughts no matter how many things I try. Like I can't find peace no matter how hard I try apart from you and just from a professional doer, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it was this very humbling moment of looking at every area of my life going, I can't. And so speak, because it sounds like that's kind of where you got. Yeah. And I can't and, ooh, I don't want. Yeah. Uh, If I'm trying to drive something forward, I do not know what's on the other side. And- the father does. So if he's the one who has the the greater vision for what he's wanting for me, then I would rather give it up. I've seen this. Yeah. I saw this image, I think, at that time where it was a little girl and it was Jesus bending down and he was taking away her little teddy bear. And she was like, yes. but why? And behind his back, he's holding like a bigger teddy bear. Love that. And I think that that image really stuck with me during that season because I had to be like, I have to let the little teddy bear go. Yeah. And it's always, yeah. what is a little teddy bear in my life? Or what am I thinking is this thing that's going to bring me a sense of peace, fulfillment. And if I'm chasing peace and fulfillment in these things or these outcomes, and even to your point, when I left the retreat too, I was spiraling in my head on, Oh, why did I say this? Or why? And it was like, Elizabeth, it's so not about you. And if it is about you, you are really going to fail. Yeah. I, that was the image I clung to after I called off my engagement. The teddy bear, the teddy bear image. Wow. And I have said that to so many girls (laughs) because I think that's what we do with God. Mm -hmm. We make him so small and it really, I got on my Instagram today because I was listening to the song breakthrough and it just talks about if God is the one that can crush the mountains into the sea and pour fire down from heaven, why are we not trusting him with every Mm -hmm. area of our life? But we make God so small and we put ourselves on the throne of like, I know best Mm -hmm. when God's like, I am God. Mm -hmm. I created everything. I created you. I know 10 years later from now. I know 10 years back from now. Like I know every hair on your head. Why are you trying to control your life? Why are you not trusting me? And it's just that picture is because we don't believe that God's good Mm -hmm. and we don't believe he has good for us. Right. And so how do you change that though? I think a lot of us want to wait to believe that God is good and what that looks like before we then trust him. Like, show me I can trust you. It's based on their circumstances. Right. Exactly. Versus you have to take steps in faith and the trust is the thing that comes after. Yeah. It's it assurance. requires- Hebrews 11, assurance what you hope for in faith and what you cannot see. Yes. And it, it requires first the vulnerability of us taking like going like this I did this at the retreat and taking a step forward in faith not knowing what rock is going to catch us underneath our foot and trusting that even if it doesn't feel good yeah doesn't mean that it isn't good and I that goes into a whole other part of my story okay tell us so broke off the engagement really let go of like I you know even if I stay single forever um this Can was I a good add something really quickly to that? This has rocked my world lately. Yeah. I love how you just said, even if. Yeah. Somebody told me last week, they go, we have got to stop saying what if, and we need to start saying even if. Like mm-hmm. instead of what if I never get married? What if I never have a child? What if I never overcome this mental illness? What if I'm always anxious? What if you change it to even if, even if I never get married, even if I never have kids, even if I never overcome this body image, God is God and he's good and he is for me and I'm here a minute and gone the next and so for whoever's listening to this I love that that was your pivot Mm -hmm. because that is something I've been clinging to in my own life it's just like we the enemy truly I believe as in Genesis dangles the what ifs Mm -hmm. in front of us when God is not a what if God he's an even if God right so right keep going sorry had to interject well and to jump on that too like 
the point of our life isn't to be amazing and great. It's to be a servant. And I think when I'm jumping into trying to pursue my own satisfaction and happiness and fulfillment, especially without um, surrender and obedience to the father, I'm trying to chase something that is not the point of my life Yeah. too. Yeah. And so that's where even the, the, even if, even if, even if worst case scenario, well, my life's not about me. So come on. This okay. is not forever home. So even if I'm single forever, then I'll be fine. Yeah. I trust that God's good. Come on. Got to that place. Um, got really involved at this point in Redeemer Community Church, which is my church home in, in Birmingham, Alabama. Love that church. Um, and that was very pivotal for me and just taking me deeper. I would say like my relationship with the Lord has always had these slower seasons and more like, um, advanced course, uh, seasons. And this kind of put me into an advanced course season. And I ended up meeting my future husband. Wow. Somewhat shortly, a good amount of time after, but still somewhat shortly after breaking off my engagement, took a lot of time, um, before we really started to date and felt so open-handed around, that relationship and knew that there was a lot about him that I loved and could see in a a future spouse. Um, but I also was like, you know what, Lord, take it. If it's not, if it's not for me, take it away, take it away, take it away. Um, we ended up getting married in May of 2020. And shortly after getting married, there was a massive pivot and things just switched. And a lot of things ended up, um, over uh, the course of a few years, like really escalating and the marriage ended up ending, unfortunately. And that was such a, another pivotal moment for me, um, because I found myself even in this, oh, but this is a good thing because I'm focusing on, Hey, what can I do? What can I do? If I do this, then I'll save my marriage. If I do that, then I'll save my marriage. I was walking through the whole thing with my church. I was following their instruction. I was working with a counselor, Julie Sparkman. She knows I love her. Um, still meet with her to this day and probably will until she tells me I'm not allowed to anymore. (laughs) Um, and I was, I was looking for what are the things that I can do? Give me the checklist again, control. Yep to save my marriage. And I remember Julie said to me one day, Elizabeth, your marriage is not your God. Wow. Your call, like your God is your God. Your call is to walk in obedience and surrender the outcome. Wow. And I was trying to drive the outcome, which was the marriage staying together. And I had to let go and say, whatever the outcome is, is whatever the outcome is. But I wanted to walk away feeling like, um, I, did my best to, to walk in obedience. And I'm, it was a hard, 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 hard season of life. Um, and I know I did not do things perfectly, but I, um, I feel like I was able to experience the Lord in, in going back to like letting kind of, I know what the stone is not. The stone is not me forcing my marriage to stay together. Um, I don't know what the stone is, but I'm going to trust the Lord. And the minute I open that up, he really is just so, close to the brokenhearted and, and sweet and such a protector. I mean, a lot of the things that I learned in my marriage was not because I, uh, because of anything of my own doing, God just told me information that I shouldn't have had. It was very strange. Um, but I had these experiences with the father where he was able to show up and demonstrate to me himself as a provider and as a protector and as a friend and as a father, like just playing all of these different roles with me in such a hard season. Um, I'm so grateful. Wouldn't change anything, but really difficult season and very much had the opportunity to experience full, like, okay, like my life's going to get blown up. Um, everything I envisioned about my future. Cause once you get married, you start planning your whole future, right? When we had the, we had the house, we were planning on the kids. Um, And being willing to let that go and just knowing my life's not mine. Yeah. Talk, talk to me a little bit more about this. All we're called to do is walk in obedience and then we have to surrender the results. Cause I think that is so powerful and completely not the way that we want to live Mm -hmm. because once again, there's that teddy bear analogy. Mm -hmm. We see a God that's going to give us something small. And I can say just once again, like the last month of my life, 
I realized the Lord brought to my attention going, you think I love you when life is good, but you don't think I love you when life is not going how you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Like, and you come to me for what I can give you, Mm. not for who I am. Mm. And so that was a big reason that I deleted a lot of social media in the last month. I like started fasting. I started praying because I just was like, Lord, I need you to renew my faith and my love for you because I will not come to you only for what you give me. Mm. Like you have to be enough. And so it was just a month of wrestling with God in a really new way Mm -hmm. because belief and faith is my number one gift. Like I take all the aptitude tests. I take all the spiritual gifts. It's like belief in faith. And if you've listened to my podcast for a while, you're like, oh man, like Nicolette has such faith. Not in the last month, mm-hmm. not even a little bit, but I feel like it was just, I, I mean, it was spiritual warfare in a way I've never ever experienced it, but in a really cool way of learning. I would, I just want you mm-hmm. like, even if I never get married, even if I'm single forever, even if noble explodes, even if I am poor, Mm. I still want you and I still trust you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. But that required this act of obedience in going, all those things could happen. Mm -hmm. And so what about the, talk to the girl, maybe that's you, maybe that's me, I don't know, who's like, but I don't want to surrender because I don't think God's going to be good. Mm This. I feel like this tension is a spectrum that we will struggle with forever as long as we are living in a broken world, being broken people. And I have to often remind myself, I don't arrive at a point with Jesus where I trust him forever and always. I am constantly moving up and down that spectrum in my different circumstances and different life seasons and in even on different days, like one day I can be totally surrendered. The next day I'm mad because things aren't what, looking the way that I want them to. And it's catching it and noticing that that's going on. And from there, clinging to Jesus and acknowledging, wow, I'm doing that thing again where I view you as the genie in the sky, where yeah. if I do blank, 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 then you'll do blank, blank, blank. And it's this exchange of a relationship. And that's not a relationship. Yeah. That's a contract. Yeah. That's no different than what I do for my full-time job. Like I'll give you these outcomes and you write me a paycheck. And it's really uncomfortable when we feel that tension, like going back to the, the girl who's like, but I don't want to. Good for you to notice that. Yeah. First step is admitting. That's amazing. Yeah. And it is God's kindness that you would feel that. And then looking for... There is always, this is a, a Juliaism, she told me. Um, this isn't your relationship with yourself and probably your relationship with other people. Always trying to ask, what could the Lord be trying to do right now in me? How can I cooperate and how can I sabotage? Yeah. Especially if, hey, I'm struggling to surrender and that feels like a mile away. Let's just be in this moment. What could he be trying to do? What does it look like to cooperate? What does it look like to sabotage? And then same with relationships. What could the Lord be trying to do in that person? How can I cooperate? How can I sabotage? That was like the question that Julie had in my head on repeat when I was going through that really difficult season in my marriage. And so um, like clinging to that and recognizing it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be perfect. It is the effort. The Lord just wants our our desire for him to grow, which comes from putting forth effort and then allowing him to grow it yeah, and that to snowball. And it's not going to look a particular way. It's going to be messy. Okay. That's really cool that I love that you said that because I even realized that in the last few weeks, like even my ability to choose Jesus has to come from Jesus. Like we, like it's just all comes down to, we just think it's all on us. And it's so crazy when you realize like there is nothing good in me. I need your help to even love you today, God. Mm-hmm. Like all I can do is show up, mm-hmm. but give me the ability to love you. Right. And I, I don't know. It's just been humbling in the last week, recognizing I cannot do anything mm-hmm. on my own. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I think like I kind of, not to pivot, but kind of want to touch on this before we go, keep going farther about we do that in dieting. Mm. We do that all the time of here's my to-do list and I expect mm-hmm. this outcome. Mm-hmm. And so I know 
and that's why I love you so much because, and that's why I started Noble, is that we seek after a diet to give us the results that we think will satisfy, which is then a body, which is the husband, like whatever, we could go down the train all right. day. But that's actually not even how it mm. works, right? So speak right. to that for a moment. Uh, I'm working on this a little bit in the chorus where it's just like the lie of the enemy is constantly a thirst and a deceitful, hey, come here. Yeah. And I was just telling you, I am not going, I'm not the girl who can recite scripture, but Jesus teaches us. He talks about like, I am the thirst that will like quench you. And there are, th there are drinks that you can take on this world that will just make you thirsty. And dieting as a result of a body image event is one of those, right? Yeah. There's the cycle. It's, I have a body image event. I start a diet and we can say diet, but also like watching what I eat. Yeah. Being a little bit more careful around these foods versus those foods. Like those mentalities are all the same and there's nuance there. That's a whole deep conversation, but starting that diet, you feel a sense of relief of, Ugh, okay, you know what? This was uncomfortable, but I have it. I have it doing something. Control. Yeah. Yep. And then it gets a little funky and it doesn't work out. And then you blame and shame yourself because you think it's your fault. When we know that 98% of diets fail. Yeah. And if if you if I took my car to a good year that had a 98% rate of not fixing the issue, I wouldn't blame my car. I would blame good that good year, you know? Yeah. Um, and then we're back to the body image event. And it starts all over. And because we live in a world that is so image focused, uh, that is so thin focused. We are not going to be without difficult body image events, difficult moments with bodies changing, right? Because from six to eight, they change from 20 to 22, from 28 to 30, it continues to go, right? Gravity does its work. Things get squishier. Mm -hmm. It's meant to happen, yeah. especially if you have a baby. My gosh, there's no protecting yourself from the discomfort of feeling a body that changes, being in a body that changes, and then yeah. also living in the world while our body is changing. So what it looks like to operate and surrender is to actually just respond differently. Now I'm not responding with a diet. I'm not responding with, I'm going to use food now as a way to control this difficult feeling that I have around my body. I'm going to acknowledge it and think, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling that way? No wonder. Jesus help me. Yeah. Cling to Jesus with, Jesus with dirt under your fingernails. Like Jesus help me. Mm, I love that. Because that's kind of where I've been in the last month, even thinking about the holidays. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like one, truly like once again, after the retreat, I just spiraled. Mm -hmm. Like it was such a hard season with my own body image, like food things that were not, haven't been a struggle in a long time popped back up and it was a wrestle. And so it's so much better now, but in the last two weeks, there's been this overwhelming fear around the holidays mm -hmm. of like, okay, I've gained weight and now I'm going into a season of gaining even more weight because it's the holidays. And then my sister's coming home or this person I'm going to see who's lost a ton of weight. Like I need to control. Mm -hmm. I need to get on lockdown. Mm. And so, but we know, and I know, and that's just the enemy trying to get trick me up. So it's been this posture of like, Lord, I cannot do the holidays alone with you alone, like without you. And I need your help. But what would you say to the girl who's maybe, I mean, speak to me if you need to. That's like, yeah. oh my gosh, terrified. I'm terrified of the holidays. Or maybe even the girl. I mean, we got a DM recently that was like, talk to the girl who maybe is in a heavier body. Mm -hmm. And she's really she's like, screw this. Mm -hmm. Like, I actually do need to lose weight. And I love your perspective mm -hmm. on this topic. So I just get, I just yeah. do so much at you, but would love to hear your wow. perspective on that. Yeah, we could, this is, there's so much, so many layers in this. And just like, any truth, there are always layers to truth. Yeah. That's why we can't make, you can't take scripture out of context and just make it black and white. Like there's so much nuance in, in all types of conversations. And so I want to do my best to speak with that nuance. Yeah. And if there's like, but what if, just know that there's, there's always more conversation to be had. Um, maybe I'll start with the person who's speaking from an experience in a body where they feel like they really need to lose weight and just want to validate that feeling uh, especially when we live in a world yeah. that is giving, not just like you have your internal dialogue around that, but if you are exposed to external feedback 
reinforcing that internal dialogue, that makes this work this work so much more difficult. And I also want to acknowledge that I don't live in a body where I get that external feedback from a doctor or a other healthcare practitioner or a personal trainer or just whoever. So I can't speak to what that feels like. I think everyone has that internal dialogue, but to be in a body where you're receiving that external feedback is really, really difficult. And I also want to offer the really good news that might be uncomfortable to hear, but hopefully is a bit freeing that a lot of times people think, but I need to lose weight because of my health. And we actually know that weight cycling, so going down and up in weight, is far worse for one's health than just maintaining a higher weight. And we know that you can improve your health through changing behaviors, even if your weight stays the same. So if a goal is to care for the body that you're in, then the goal is going to be to implement gentle behaviors, but whatever happens to your weight is whatever happens to the weight, right? We want to sometimes have that be this exact outcome that we see because we're told that that is the metric that we should look to. And remember that your body is designed from a creator who knew exactly what they were doing. Bodies comes bodies come in all shapes and sizes, just like dog breeds come in all shapes and sizes. Yeah. Like if the pug tries to chase the ball and eat the kibble the way that the chihuahua does, it's just going to look like a sick pug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So surrendering this visual outcome or scale-based outcome of what it looks like to improve your health can be really, really helpful. And it's hard to do that around people who are always reinforcing that yeah. message or are living in the matrix is what I call it. Like the people who haven't been released from the matrix yet, they're still operating in yeah. a culture that makes money, by the way, on you believing this lie that your weight has to change for you to have a guaranteed health outcome. So hopefully that's restful and there's a way to approach that that is practicing self-care and not self-worship, which are very different things. Okay, this was my favorite topic that you talked about at the retreat. And I've told so many people about this because you did such a great job on the retreat. We did, we gave Liz a full session and she just gave such a good, you just articulated weight and health really way, mm -hmm. really well, because we associate that health is based on a number. Mm -hmm. Like if I weigh this number, I'm healthy. But reality is that the symptoms that you are involving yourself in or not the symptoms sorry the um habits that you are ha doing to create a certain number so it's typically you know restrict restrict binge restrict restrict binge to eventually get to a number or you're on ozempic or you're doing all these different things to get to a number that's actually the problem not your actual weight number mm -hmm. and it's this crazy like it has just been so mind-blowing to me because that is never talked about Mm -hmm. And if we actually go back to just simply honoring our bodies, honoring our bodies over the holidays is going to look different for every person. Mm -hmm. It's going to settle our bodies in a really good place. But maybe this is a hot take and push back on this. I think, at least for me, and what the Lord revealed to me in the beginning of this year is that your body has changed mm -hmm. because you've never let go of control. Mm -hmm. Your body is not where it's supposed to be because you've never actually surrendered it. Mm. And I, it was this aha moment of me going, my whole life I've yo-yo diet. My whole life my weight has been up and down because I've never actually been gently consistent. I've never actually surrendered. Mm -hmm. And it's, I have no idea where my body's supposed to be. Mm -hmm physically weight wise mm -hmm. because I've never let it actually just be mm -hmm. I've controlled I've restricted I've just done it all and so this last year has been a journey of surrendering mm -hmm. and it's not been easy and my body is not I thought oh yeah I'll just surrender this to God and then I'll look like a <laughs> supermodel but and I say that gently because I know we all have different shapes and different sizes but the freedom that has existed within that has been incredible but also realizing that I've just I've for so long attached everything to a number when it had nothing to do with the number at mm -hmm. all but just the habits underneath it right how am I how am I living how am I feeling and also you know 
if people are experiencing like why, well, you know, I can't, I have to have watch what I eat or have control with food because if not, it feels chaotic, like chaotic eating in of itself is a symptom of a deeper issue. And that is something that can be healed without trying to focus on changing one's body. Yeah. And chaotic eating can cause fatigue. It can cause like GI discomfort. Actually, a lot of, um, GI issues are, they're like, is a strong co-occurring condition with disordered eating and eating disorders. And so, there's so many layers and the great news is, is you can address them all together, but there has to be that willingness to put weight as the outcome, at least on the back burner. The, yeah. It's not this flip the switch, don't care about it anymore. Yeah. That is not how that goes. That takes yeah. time. And again, that's constantly existing on a spectrum. I'm constantly on a spectrum of how neutral or not am I feeling toward my body yeah. and how I feel today might be different than how I feel when I meet maybe in the future, God willing, if I end up having a baby uh, or when I'm going through menopause, like there will always be this spectrum. And so it's just detangling how I feel about my body and my weight versus what are my behaviors? How am I engaging with movement and with food and with practicing self-care in a way that is honoring and gentle and simple It's meant to be simple. We're giving cues to make it simple. Um, And can I pursue healing in both of those places, but just separate them? Yeah, that's so good. And I want to speak to the girl for a minute that is maybe feeling like, no, but you don't understand. I I need to lose weight. Like I, I am unhealthy. I need to lose weight. Like my doctors tell me, my mom tells me. Mm -hmm. And I hear you. And like, this sounds so crazy, but it doesn't often matter what size you are because I have family members thinking that about me right Mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. in the size that I'm in Mm -hmm. compared to the size I was last year. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's been this putting the noise on the back burner, putting people's approval on the back end and having to take time for my body to readjust to a new system. Mm -hmm. And it's been really hard. Because I think also what the enemy does is that he goes, but if you let go of the diets, if you let go of the control, you are going to get so much bigger. You're going to get so Mm. much more unlovable. And then you're going to die alone with a million cats. And what I've seen in the last year has been this journey of going, if you really are good, if you really have the bigger Mm. teddy bear behind your back, there must be something better in me letting go of culture's lies around body image that I've never actually experienced Because it's insanity to do the same thing over and over and expect different results. It's insanity to do diets over Mm -hmm. and over and over and expect that you've finally found the magical one. It's insanity for me to think, oh my gosh, I'm just going to diet over the holidays and really control everything I'm doing and expect there to be peace. When has that ever worked for me? Mm -hmm. It's never worked for me. Mm -hmm. When in your life, okay, let's take it to singleness. Let's take it to dating. When in your life has you controlling your relationship status ever actually worked out for you? Right. It just brought anxiety. It's brought fear. It's brought a spiral. Maybe that be career. Maybe be, I don't know. Right. Whatever you are trying to control is going to suffocate. Right. And right. is going to be ruined. And it becomes more chaotic. Exactly. Same with food. The more we, like, think about a neutral food, like a cheese stick. I've never had a client be like, I just feel so out of control around cheese sticks. Probably because they haven't tried to restrict cheese sticks. Yeah. Uh, or a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or a carrot. And- Again, that's so layered and there's a lot there that's true and there's a lot there that I could debunk too. And that's coming back to there are ways to improve one's health without forcing your body into a smaller size. There's actually a lot of research that demonstrates body size can't change that significantly from a percentage perspective. Uh, If we think about set point, if we think about um, there's, I really hate the term of this, but it's like a, a way that mass is managed this process called collateral fattening. And so reasons why dieting is the leading cause of weight gain. Yeah. Um, when mass comes down, you don't just lose fat mass, you also lose muscle mass. And that sets off a lot of alarms in the body and your body intentionally regains weight and increases hunger. And even if you're maintaining your diet, your body can rebound. So there's just so much nuance there and going back to it. It's not, it's not worked for you and it's not worked for most of the other population too. People who are able to, achieve significant, and I mean greater than the percent that 
won't set off an alarm in a body, people are able to achieve those changes and maintain them typically are either involving themselves with eating disorder behaviors or they just have a low genetic resilience, meaning like survival of the fittest. Yeah. Body's not going to fight starvation that hard. So it's, it's really layered and just coming back to being honest with oneself is where is this energy on, but I have to lose weight coming from what percent of it is yeah. true concern for health. Um, what percent of it is just objective discomfort in the body that you're in. And that is normal. And there are still ways to improve more physical comfort in the existing body. And then what percent is, I want to look a certain way. I feel like I'm less totally. valuable. The world that I live in tells me that I'm less valuable and want to acknowledge that that is hard and real. It, yes. And we can't change that. That's where being involved in community is really important with people who are in the same space can be really helpful. And then constantly coming back to the even if and asking would I rather force my body to be smaller or would I rather see more of Jesus? Cause I can pursue one or the other. I love that you say that cause you can't pursue both. Mm -hmm. I mean, truly, I mean, I've pursued both my whole life and it hasn't worked. Mm -hmm. Like you you're cannot, a hamster wheel. You're a hamster wheel. You cannot chase the Lord while also trying to look like culture. Mm -hmm. I know that sucks. Mm -hmm. Like it sucks, but one leads to life and one leads to death. And I just like want, whoever's listening to hear this though too is that culture is a lie and it's only culture that's telling us this body is the right one and this is the wrong one mm -hmm. and it just breaks my heart and that's where I mean once again going back to this month of really hard so many lies have come into my head and fear around like this is why I'm still single like I am still single because of my weight and if I just could get back to that size then maybe Mm. And I'm like, okay, first off, I would never want a guy to choose me mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I'm that weight versus this weight. Second, I was also single when I was that size. So that didn't, nothing's changed. And three, it's only culture telling me that no man will ever choose me unless I look like that. And four, I don't want a guy that chooses me because of that. Right. And, but I also want to just say that in the world we're living in, porn is on the uprise mm. and the porn industry is blowing up. And I'm so sorry. Like it is mm -hmm. taking out men minute by minute, day by day mm -hmm. is the fat, one of the fastest growing industries yeah. to ever exist. Right. And so why are we not shocked that no one is choosing anyone unless you look like a Victoria's secret model, mm -hmm. because that's all they're watching on the screen 24 hours right. a day. And so it's hard when you are like competing against so many screens, but, and I gave it, I spoke at Auburn last week and it was, I just gave this talk of like, this was not how it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. like it was never supposed to be where a man is looking at images of unrealistic women all day. Mm -hmm. And then he looks at you and doesn't want to pursue you because of your body. Like it was not supposed to be this way. We were not supposed mm -hmm. to go into the holidays and be fearful around food. Mm -hmm. We were not supposed like, Literally, do you know what Christmas is about? Like, it was literally not about this. Right. And yet we are anxious and consumed and sad because it was never supposed to be this way. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I could go off, but. Yeah. Well, and porn was a big part of the story within my marriage. Yeah. And sometimes, too, there's this dynamic of if I had this body, then this, then this, and one of those things might be, and then I would have a marriage and as someone who is married, marriage does not solve loneliness yeah. problems. It does not solve fulfillment struggles. If anything, it lights everything up like a Christmas tree. Like it really takes lighter fluid on your sin and shows it to you. And it's hard. And it is a big thing to do. And so when choosing someone to do that with, it's like who, who that makes a big impact on your experience being married. And if there is this dynamic in that person where they're struggling with their relationship with 
pornography. It's not a, have you looked at porn question? It is, what is your current relationship with porn look like? And, and how are you addressing that? Just like with women, what's your current relationship with your body image look like? And how are you addressing that? It's still symptoms of the same sin root manifesting in different ways. And also I want to acknowledge plenty of women struggle with porn too. Totally. And the heart of the person, if they are struggling to be pursuing you as a potential partner because of the way that you look, then that is not the heart of a person that you maybe want to hit your wagon to in a marriage setting. Yes. Think about what he's going to say to your daughter one day. Right. Or just it, it breeds all types of complications and difficulties and hurt in a marriage. Yeah. I'm so sorry that that happened. And Thank you. I'm proud of you for saying that out loud. Yeah. I know that's really vulnerable and scary. Mm-hmm. And I know, yeah, there's so much to your story that we could go into, but I just, am, I respect you. Thank you. And I know that it was really, really hard. Yeah. And I just, man, my heart breaks. My heart breaks, but imagine how much God's heart breaks for mm-hmm. what he's looking down on. Mm-hmm. Like, I just, he is sobbing over the porn industry. And he's sobbing over the girl that's looking in the mirror, hating what she sees. Mm -hmm. He is sobbing over you finding for a marriage and it failing. Mm -hmm. He is sobbing over unrepentance. He is sobbing over everything because this was not how it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like even just going into the holiday season, I mean, as we're going into Thanksgiving tomorrow, if you're listening to this, my challenge for you right here, right now, just grab a piece of paper and start writing out the things that you're thankful for. Like in a world where there is so much darkness and in a world where you can sit here and say like, but this, but this, like just take a sit and be like, but look at what God has done. Like Mm -hmm. take a look at the big teddy bear that has already happened for you Mm -hmm. rather than continually staring at the small thing. And I had this thought when I spoke at Auburn and the night before I spoke, one of my friends released that she was pregnant. And one of my other friends was saying like, oh my gosh, like I'm still single. Why? Like, I'm so jealous that she is married and has a baby. And I just thought about this. And I was like, man, we can often look at somebody else's life and say I'm behind, right? Mm -hmm. But somebody is looking at your life, comparing themselves to you, going, but I'm behind. Mm. And what you're, like, you're behind is somebody else's I'm behind. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? But don't combat that to combat discontentment whether that's in singleness life christmas season food body whatever is to look at what god is doing today and look at what he has done right and where you are going one day right that is the only thing that you have to cling to especially i mean put that in body image what has changed my life is going man this body is temporary and one day i'm gonna be given a heavenly body mm-hmm. that will never struggle with this again ever Like we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen because what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Like that is where we put our hope. Mm -hmm. And I just, uh, like I just feel like the enemy is destroying us by making us fix fixate on our body in the mirror, on our relationship status, on where our career needs to be and where it's not, how much money we should have in a bank. But what if this holiday season was different? Right. Well, and when we feel the tension of that, the dissatisfaction with our life, whether it be body image, relationships, holidays, struggles, the question is, what about the gospel am I not believing right now? Totally. It's not, what about the gospel do I not know? We all know a lot about the gospel. What about what about the gospel am I not believing and operating from or just forgetting in this moment? Yeah. And when you pursue truth and have an answer, like a head knowledge answer to that, but you're not feeling relief, it is just like, Jesus, help me. Amen. Help help me let that sink from my head to my heart. Help my disbelief. Mm -hmm. And I think I was, I read Jackie Hills Perry's book on holiness. Love her. She's fantastic. But I'm like, you don't know who God is when you are focused on your little issues. Mm -hmm. Like you do not recognize how big God is, how powerful God is, how much like he is insanely in love with you. Like he died for you. He sent his perfect son for you hundreds of years ago on Christmas day, because he's like, I'm obsessed with my daughter. I am so big, so mighty. I am holy. Like it Mm -hmm. says that his train like fills the heavens. When we actually fix our eyes on that, our little problems 
are so minuscule. And that has been what the Lord has done in the last month. It's like, do you not know who I am, Nicola? Mm -hmm. Your circumstances are nothing compared to my power and my love for you. That is what the Lord has done in my last month is that he has taken my eyes off of my circumstances, how I wish they could change, how I wish my body was different, my relationship status was different, how I wish Noble was somewhere else. And he's like, but I am God. And when you actually fix your eyes on how big and majestic and holy God is and how much he's crazy about you, that your body is not powerful enough to mess up the most powerful man on the planet, universe, whatever you want to say, when he is so much bigger and can change your relationship status in a second that he has planned in advance for the works he has that you're going to do, you can't not stop thinking about your small problems. Right. And it just changes the holiday season. Mm -hmm. And I just have been like in awe of the Lord, but also grateful for a hard month. Mm -hmm. because it's brought me to my knees of recognizing how big God is and how wildly small I am. Mm -hmm. And circumstances, again, not feeling good doesn't mean that they aren't good and won't be used for good. And our definition of goodness is so much different because he has the greater vision. He knows exactly what I am trying to teach you and refine in you so that you might see me more and find more rest. And that's where, you know, Julie asked me, she said, would you rather have been single up until this point or walked through what you walked through in your marriage wow. and be where you are now? Because I was feeling like I'm behind or yeah. I was, you know, I was feeling like I'd had this thing done to me and I had, but it was up to me to choose how I wanted to respond in views and, and view and let that experience shape me. And I realized I, I wouldn't trade it because of the way I got to see Jesus and my circumstances and the way he showed up for me and provided for me and protected me and allowed what was an awful, awful, awful season of life to massively shape and change yeah. my heart and who I am and would not trade it. I'd walk through the whole thing again. I love that. And it's just like, I mean, even looking on the last month, like I wouldn't trade it. Mm-hmm. To recognize the holiness of God. Mm-hmm. So I think just for the girl that's listening to this, like if you're in a hard season, the only thing that's going to get you out of it is to fix your eyes on somebody bigger, better, more majestic, and more in love with you than the things that you're in love with. Mm-hmm. Like you have to recognize that. Because mm-hmm. that, and like going back to food and going back to body image, that's why I started Noble. Mm is because when you get your eyes off of food, when you get your eyes off of your body, when you get your eyes off of, I need to work out this much in order to blank, 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 and you focus on who God is and what he says about you, that's the beginning of freedom because the rest of things just melt away. Yeah, it doesn't tend to go well for us when we focus on ourselves. No. It might for a little, and that's going to fall apart. So tell me this, Liz, and I know that because we're almost out of time, I know that we, gosh, I love this episode. This has been so good. But I do want to talk about, because in our 12 Days of Noble Christmas, and I know we've kind of touched on it, and I kind of want to land the plane on this, is that you've talked a lot about chaotic eating. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if you want to hear all of it by the Devo, and it's going to be really fun. Like, I'm excited for our Zoom calls, our online community. Really, my heart behind it is just so many of you have DM'd me on Instagram going, how do I get involved? How do I join Noble? I can't come on the retreat. And this Devo is the opportunity to get a taste of what an online community within Noble might look like. But I know for me, and I know for a lot of my friends, we have Friendsgivings, we have Thanksgiving, we have all these things coming Mm -hmm. up and we're fearful around chaotic eating. Talk to that girl for a minute. I mean, going back to the community, it's, if there's fear there, jumping into a group of people who are exactly where you are, not a group of people who claim to have it all figured out, but who are working towards the same goal can be helpful, yeah. especially if you are spending holidays with people who do not think similarly to you or are not working toward that same goal. You know, I love to talk about the antelope brain. Yep. Um, human instinct, which is why we want to be thin, human instinct tells us, What's everybody else doing? 
And how do I make sure I'm, I'm in the pod? I'm in the pack because no one wants to be the lone antelope because what happens to the lone antelope? The lone antelope gets eaten by the lion. So we are hardwired to want to be a part and to want to compare and scan and see, are we in the pack? So it's important to jump into community with people so you still feel like you have a pack and you're yeah. not the lone antelope as you might be surrounded by people who have different views and approaches and beliefs and journeys and stories with Jesus and their body and food yeah, and have are probably navigating all types of dynamics. Um, walking into holidays with food, just normalizing that there are going to be some foods that feel really exciting because you only have access to them so many times a year. And there are, I think I gave three or four tips on how to navigate those feelings yeah. in a way that keeps you grounded, allows you to enjoy those things, and hopefully bring more peace to what might feel like chaos in mm. the devotional. So we just encourage people to one, join the community and, and read the Devo. Come on. I'm so excited. And I think something that I've also started doing in my life is, and this is like really sad for me, I've started distancing myself from people that are really body focused. Mm. Like I've just started to recognize like, man, who are those people in my life that are really consumed with their body? Mm -hmm. like, who are the ones that are always making comments? Mm -hmm. Who are the ones that are always talking about their workout routine, what they ate, what they shouldn't have eaten? And it's triggering. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, these are the things going on in my head. I need to surround myself with people that aren't thinking like this. Mm -hmm. And it has been so refreshing. Like my roommates are such a gift to me because they don't talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it's allowed this safe space to not feel like it's always there. But I think also confessing is so powerful. Of confessing where you've believed lies, confessing the lies that you're believing, but then also renouncing. Like what are the lies that you're believing today around your body, around your situation, about your life? And then turning away from the things that trigger that. Mm. And I've done that. I mean, I've been going on runs lately and it's been an act of worship, honestly. It's just like, I confess that I believe this. I confess that I'm believing this and I'm turning away and believing this instead, God. Mm -hmm. Like I confess that I believe that unless I lose weight, no guy will ever choose me. And I'm gonna turn away from that lie and believe that you are God. You got good plans. And even if mm -hmm. you are still good. Yeah. And you love me so much. Yeah. Or, and at least take steps to work to believe that and not take steps to pursue changing your body so it's not that the these feelings are not going to come up anymore it's that you are responding differently asking for God's help reminding him of reminding you of his truth yeah ask God for help like oh man if I like that is I hope you gain one thing it's like I can't God you know what's funny we were talking just before this about how like the struggles of asking for help Oh, yeah, and like <laughs> how different people have different reactions to either like task focused help or just like be there for me type help. Yeah. And Jesus is just overjoyed when, when we, we come to help. him for anything. He's like, I would love to thank you for coming, sweet daughter. I have been waiting and asking and am thrilled to be here. And he is just on the couch waiting for the waiting for the call and happy to show up every single time. Honestly, it reminds me of Matthew 7, and it's just such a great place to land. And it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? And it's just this beautiful picture of going, Ask God for help this holiday season. Mm -hmm. Ask God for help on hard body image days. Ask God for help when you're struggling with anxiety. Like, are you quick to cry out to God or try to fix mm -hmm. or do? But what if this holiday season, what if in every area of your life, your posture is first surrendering mm -hmm. and saying, God, I can't, but you can. Yeah. Help me. Looking for him. What's he trying to do? How can I cooperate? How can I sabotage? That's like, well, so where's Waldo? <laughs> yeah. it's, if that's what you need when <laughs> family member makes a comment or you have a food thought or clothes feel uncomfortable on Thanksgiving just where's Waldo <laughs> yeah where are you God and like I have started asking God like Lord I don't know what I'm gonna wear tonight help me mm -hmm. help me find an outfit that fits he does it every time mm -hmm. help me as I go through this buffet table I'm nervous right. help me right 
Help me not feel insecure about my relationship status and my family when my mm-hmm. family members ask me about it. Yeah. Help me to be confident. I feel insecure, God. Mm-hmm. Give remind me of who I am, and it and it requires me going. I am the daughter of a king. Right. I am loved. I am right on time. My right. body is good. Right. I have to declare the truths. Right, and the goal is yeah to feel in your body. It's comfortable, not confident. There's nothing in the scripture so about us feeling confident in the way that we look. The only thing that we should feel confident in is Come who on. we are in Him. That's so good. Gosh, Liz, I'm so encouraged by you. And if you have been encouraged by the last hour of our talk, I am telling you, join our 12 Days of Noble Christmas. I'm join so our community. I'm so excited. It's going to be fun. It's so fun. And just, I'm really bad at asking for help. And so many people have stepped up and helped. Abigail, our videographer, she has helped with the website. Um, our good friend Alexia has helped with the design of the Devo. And it's just been this really sweet project because our hope and goal is just to re- allow you to have truth as you go into the holiday season in a season that can often feel chaotic and to offer you a community of women that you can say like, man, I'm really struggling with binging today. Great. Hey, I'm really struggling with going on a walk. I feel insecure. Great. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. So our, the Devo link will be in the podcast show notes. It will be all over my Instagram. You best believe. And I just hope that I get to know you. Liz, I know wants to know you and we just can't wait to walk alongside you in the holiday season. Liz, is there any last word that you want anyone to be reminded of today? Just keep looking for Jesus. Where's Waldo? Come on. He is in every single thing. He's in you. He's beside you. Therefore you do not need to be afraid. Giving you opportunities, trying to teach you something in each and every circumstance to just seek. And if you don't see him, ask for help. Literally ask a friend. They'll tell you where he is. Mm -hmm. Um, Y'all, thanks for listening. I hope that you join the 12 Days of Noble Christmas. I think it's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. And it's just a little preview of what we do on the retreats. Yeah. Because you're coming on all of them. Happy to. They're so fun. They're so great. We love you guys. Hope you're having a great day. Bye. Mm